Hi, welcome to this video. We're going to have a look at how we can implement a product quantization index or index PQ in FICE. And we're also going to have a look at how we can implement a composite index using uh, an inverted file list, IVF, and also PQ together to improve our results or our performance even further. Now, if we just have a quick look at this, um, if you if you watched the previous video on the logic behind PQ, you'll, you'll recognize this, but this is just demonstrating the speed increase that we can get, and also the, the, mainly the memory increase, which is the, the important uh, factor in, in PQ. And obviously this, there's a huge increase here. So the speed increase is, is a five to six times increase with just PQ, and the memory decrease is huge it's like a 97 percent reduction in in memory now i'm not going to go through all of the you know how all of that works because we already did it in the in the last video um, so there is a link to that video in the description so if you'd like to go through that you know, go ahead and, and, and go through it uh, but if you just want to see how this works in FICE, then you know continue and we'll we'll, we'll jump straight into it okay so the first thing that we need to do is actually get our data so we're going to be using this uh, the SIFT 1M data set. Uh, again, in the description, there's a link to a notebook where you can download and also load that into your own notebook if you'd like to do that. Uh, but just say it's a pretty straightforward, very popular data set for these sort of examples. I, I use it all the time. And I'll just show you the sort of shape. So XB is, um, it is like, it is the deep, vectors that we'll be indexing. So we're going to index these vectors in our index in FICE and, and search through them. Typically it has a 1 million vectors. I'm going to stick with 500K because it can just take a little bit of time for everything to load. Although that being said, I don't think it's that bad. So let me, yeah, you know what? Let's just go with 1 million. It's more interesting. And then XQ, uh, I'm just using a single vector here. So we just have one vector in there. Uh, as you see, dimensionality for all of our vectors here is 128, which is uh, pretty typical, but it's definitely on the lower end for dense vectors. So let's let's uh, first initialize our, our PQ index. So we need to import FICE and we'll get our dimensionality, which is xb.shape1. Now I'm using this slightly different syntax to usual uh, to align better with the, the pq notation it, usually you, you can go with locus d and you can go with that it's fine it's not really an issue but i'm just going to go with uppercase for now to align better to, to that notation if you are following on from the from the previous video and we're going to set m equals to eight so this is how many uh, sub vectors we have now we typically we assert that uh, d is divisible by m but we, we already know it is so i'm going to skip that uh, but that's something that you you always need to you do need to make sure that D is divisible. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm going to put it in anyway. So let's assert that D is divisible by M. Okay, you just put this in because otherwise we, we don't, we are not splitting our vectors or sub vectors equally and we'll, we <laughs> will not be allowed to do that. So we do need to make sure that's always the case. Uh, and then we're going to set the N bits value. So this is the, the number of bits per, per sub quantizer. So if you we're watching the previous videos, we would see this as, so the, the K star value is equal to two to the power of N bits. Okay. So the number of uh, centroids that we have within each uh, sub quantizer. And then we, we initialize our index. So index equals FICE, index PQ, D, M, and N bits. Okay. That's our index ready to go. And what we need to do now is actually add our uh, vectors. Now, you have to think with, with product quantization, we are clustering. Uh, our sub quantizers uh, are using clustering. So we, we do actually need to train it. So uh, we can see if an index needs to be trained or not by using this. So we write index is trained. In this case, is trained as false. So that means we need to train it before we add our vectors. So to do that, we need to write index train, and then we pass it XB. We run that, and this uh, this can take a little bit of time. It shouldn't be too long. Um, 
but with if you start increasing the n bits value which is probably a, a good idea i mean the n bits of maybe 11 is actually what is recommended in the in the pq paper uh, but i'm not using it here because it takes a long time to to train and build your vectors so i'm avoiding it here but you know if you if you're using this i definitely recommend you know trying those uh, larger n bits values uh, it's also worth noting that we when we're using the composite index of ivf and pq we can't use an n bits value of greater than eight but we'll we'll move on to that anyway uh, that has to be a, a something that they've hard coded into FICE. for now i think they should be they should be removing that limitation at some point so we have now trained and now we can add our vectors okay so now what we want to do is we'll return say the top uh, k most similar vectors but we'll go with k of 100 and then we want to do our search so we're going to go a distance and i so typically we'd write d here but obviously we are already using d so i'm going to write distance equals index of search and then in here we get past our query and we also pass k and that will return the the k nearest neighbors uh, in that search so in here if we write shape we see that we have a hundred of those and then the distances here are the actual distances so i are the indices of the nearest neighbors distance is the actual distances that they have returned now let's go ahead and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to time it so we can use this time function to uh, essentially run this cell multiple times and, and get the average time taken to to run it uh, which is obviously quite useful when we're comparing different indexes and we'll do index.search and we want x q and k okay now we see that that took 3.34 milliseconds so reasonably fast let's um let's compare that to a, a flat index so uh, we'll do l2 index equals fice index flat l2 and uh, d or d with a capital and l2 index dot add and we want to add all of our data so it's b and let's time that again so i'm just going to copy this here and we just replace that with l2 index and let's see what we get okay so an average of 19.5 milliseconds so you know already you know this is pretty quick right uh, which is cool now we can check the performance of our index as well now this varies from from all the times i've tested it but we should get something around maybe 50. Uh, so 50 percent recall isn't uh, isn't exactly cutting edge but that is just that's pq that is how it is if we want high recall we can increase n bits to get that uh, but it's definitely you know it's, it's a drawback of, of using uh, pq uh, okay so we want so we want to sum for every one value for every value that we find in our index so in our um in the returned indexes for our pq results if they are in the l2 results so we're just saying you know how many of the results uh, returned by our pq index were also returned by our l2 index which we are seeing as the 100 percent recall so l2 index 100 percent recall and here we're seeing okay how many of those do we match to using our pq index if i in l2 i so i actually need to just copy this pull it down here so when, when we use a time it, we can't get any variables out from it, which is, I don't know why, but it's, it's, it's a little bit annoying. So we will get L2 dist and L2 i. Okay, so this time we get 38% recall. Okay, so let's now have a look at the, the memory usage of each of these so i'm just going to define a function get memory so we can more easily compare those and what we'll do is we'll just write our index to file 
like so, index, and I'll just call it temp index now, uh, because we're going to delete it straight away afterwards. We're just writing it to file so we can read, uh, see how large the index is, and then we delete it again. The file size equals OS path dot get size to get the size of, of that index in in bytes, I think. So we we'll do temp dot index. And then we don't really, we're just using that to check the size, so we just want to delete that afterwards. So like so. And then we just return the file size. Okay, so let's do that for both of our both our indexes. So we get the memory for the L2 index first. Uh, let me, so that's remove, not remote. Okay, so we get pretty big. That's, uh, it's half a gigabyte, which is <laughs> massive. And then we want to get memory again for our index. Let's see what we have. Uh, so now we have, uh, we have eight megabytes. So that's a, a massive, Control, that's right, so 8 over 512. So it's a 98.4% 90, reduction in size, which is uh, huge, uh, which is really cool. Now, we, like I said before, we have this composite index where we have both the IVF step and a PQ step. So we're going to have a look at how we can implement that and we'll see that memory decrease will be slightly less significant uh, because it's a, a more complex index, although it'll be very small still. And then the, the speed decrease will be absolutely insane. So <laughs> we'll, we'll go into that. So now we have we have nList, which is the number of um, the number of cells within our IVF index. So if we just have a quick look at what that might look like. So imagine these are our PQ vectors on a, on a 2D space. Adding IVF essentially does this. So we, we add all these uh, separating cells called Voronoi cells, and each of the vectors within each cell is assigned to the vector to that cell centroid. Now here, this you see the, the magenta dot at the bottom, that's our query vector and it's landed within that cell that you see highlighted. Now, because it's landed in there, we only compare it to those vectors within that cell that are also assigned to the same cell. And that's what we're doing with endless where saying how many of those cells we would like to have. Now we're gonna go with 2048, and it's worth knowing that this must be greater than, greater than or equal to star, uh, which is equal to 2 to the power of n bits. Okay, so in, in this case, we could go with uh, 256, to be fair. Uh, let's, can we, yeah, let's, I mean, let's go with that for, for now and we'll see how it goes. And then we initialize our index like this. So we go index equals FICE, index IVFPQ. And in here, we need to pass our vectors. So in this case, we will just, when I say vectors, the, the I mean the index that contains our vectors. Uh, so you typically see this written as quantizer, but I'm going to write it as, as vectors because I think it's a little bit less confusing. So we'll do FICE index flat L2. So we're just going to use these as our starting point, but that doesn't mean we're storing these as they are in our in our index, they actually get processed using the PQ step as we as we already did before. So we have vex and D, n lists, m and n bits. Okay, so we now have our index, and we can see if it's trained like we did before. Obviously, it will not be because we, we are still using PQ again. So we we need to train that. And we do the same as we did before. So train XP. After that, we add our vectors and we can get our results. So index.search XQK. 
Okay, now we haven't seen how fast that is, so let's let's have a look. We'll use time it again. Okay, and although the actual search took longer, it's because we're looping through. See, we had 10,000 loops for, for this test, and we got <laughs> this number, which is insane small. Uh, so 0 0.0.001. 0 if I know, no, that's not right. We are on, what are we on? This, 0 0.1 milliseconds, sorry. So 0 0.1 milliseconds, what, what did we get before? It was here. So this is using our flat index, uh, 20 milliseconds. If we go up a little further, we see 3.3 milliseconds for that search up there. So yeah, super fast. And then if we, we check the recall, so we'll do, we'll use the same as what we used before. So where is our sun here? And like I said, this can go up and down. Um, so at 24 this time, it's pretty, pretty bad. But I mean, like I said, PQ isn't, isn't the best for recall. But what we, what we can do is actually, because we're using IVF, we can increase the number of cells that we search through. So you can kind of see that happening here. We, so using the example from before, we start with an end probe value of one, which is the default, increase it to two, three, four, five, and, and so on and so on. Uh, and we can increase that all the way up to search all of our end probe values. Of course, that is kind of a waste of time because if you're searching through all of your cells, you're basically just doing a flat search with the additional overhead of having a IVF index. So it's even slower. But we can use that information. So we, we know that if we set our index dot n probe equal to 2048, which is the, the number of cells that we, the maximum number of cells that we set, or did we use 256? Uh, no, we used 256, so the endless value. So we can just put endless here. If we do that and we do a search again, uh, x, q, and k, and we go this i, do that again. And let's come up here, get our recall. So we see that the maximum recall we're going to get with this instance is 33%. Now, this is pretty low working on it. Before I was getting sort of 50, 52%. So I think it's also a case of, you know, there is some randomness in, in what you're going to output from your index. But of course, again, we can also increase n bits or and do some other things so we can increase m bits, try decreasing m and, and see how things work. But it's also worth noting with IVF PQ, the n bits value does have to be eight at the moment, at least. It's just a, it's something that's hard coded into FICE. Unless you want to go into the FICE code and, and change that, you can remove it if you want. Now, what we want to do is obviously not search through the entire index. So we're going to change n probe. Let me also bring this down. We're going to change n probe to something that is not quite as high. So maybe 20. We'll get 33. So that's high enough for us to get our, our maximum performance. Uh, but obviously, it's going to be a lot quicker because we're searching through 20 cells rather than 256. Let's try 10. 32. So increase it a little bit to 12. Still 32. 16. 33. So you know, around this area here, so 14, 13. So 13 is our sort of optimum uh, m probe value where we get the, the max recall out of that uh, the quickest time. But of course, you know, which one you, which uh, parameters you use, completely up to you and depends on your use case as well. Uh, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been useful and I will see you in the next one. Bye.